We're so pleased you decided to check out a great message from Fusion Church. This is our revealed series that we're doing over this Christmas season. We hope it blesses you. And if you want to learn more about Fusion Church or how to give financially to the ministry, you can go to fusionchurch.cc. We hope this blesses you. There we go. There we go. Hey, how's everybody doing? Come on. Yeah, God is able. Let's celebrate that. Hey, we have Maze Landing, those watching online, Summers Point. Come on, let's welcome everybody. Yeah, come on, Jesus. I mean, was that a miracle or not? I know we praise God already, but come on, I think we get some old school, old fashioned praise break going on. Come on, stand to your feet. Maze Landing, stand to your feet. Summers Point, come on, let's praise God. Yes, Lord, we praise you. Come on, God, Lord, we praise you, we praise you, we praise you. Come on, Maze Landing, Lord, we praise you. God, we thank you that you are able to be praised. Yeah. Yes, God, you are able. You are able, you are able, you are able. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Come on, high five someone. Grab a seat, high five someone. Just make sure you hit them. Confetti. I mean, it's a celebration in this place. Uh, It is good. It is on in this place. And God is able. I love that scripture. Ephesians chapter 320. God is able. Now to him. Now to him. Now to him. The God who is able. What does it say? To do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask. Come on, let's keep on reading. According to the power that works in us. To Him be the glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I I mean, six months ago when we started to pray, honestly, if you've been with us, and uh, uh, Tom Wood on The Tonight Show said, you know, five years ago, if if you were here and my wife asked the other day, she said, Brendan, would you have ever believed? And I said, no way. No way. Because there was just a simple desire to change people's lives through the power of Jesus Christ. Nothing more, nothing less. The presence of God established within our lives, uh, serving the community in radical ways. And we can do that. Come on, let's not be selfish over this Christmas season, but let's radically serve this community. And, and don't wait for us to get the ideas, because we can all get the ideas, correct? Tell your neighbor, you can get the ideas. Go ahead, t- tell them, you can get the ideas. I mean, there's so many different things that are happening in this Christmas season. And so uh, as a church, let, let's be reaching out to those uh, that are desperate to be in church, and you don't know the person that's desperate to be in church until you ask them. And so just simply ask. Take a step of faith. Uh, I, I've been praying for boldness. God, let me do the, let, let me do the same. And, and I believe, please hear, hear me clearly, both Maze Landing and Summers Point, hear me clearly. Uh, this, the messages over the next three weeks, okay? The messages over the next three weeks uh, that talks about peace, the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ. Our world is desperate for peace. Desperate for peace. And just because you're a Christ follower doesn't mean you necessarily understand the true peace that Jesus gives to you. And so I believe over these next few weeks, I believe there is going to be a move of God upon people's lives. There'll be Christ followers, church people that will be set free. Uh, Anxiety will fall off. Depression will fall off. Marriages are going to be healed. I know that. God has spoken to me so clearly about that. Children that are far from you or disconnected are going to come back home. A, a relationship with a brother or a sister, a mother and a father are going to be healed because you encounter the Prince of Peace. And so let's get out there and let's compel and let's pray and let's ask and let's do what we can do to get people into the house of God. Not because of anything, but that they will have a game-changing, life-changing experience with God through the power of the Holy Spirit. Because I think all of us would agree today that that it is only the Holy Spirit that brings healing through the power of Jesus Christ. Amen? So we can do everything. We can can have unique and creative outreaches, but, but it's only through the power of God. And that is one thing I believe that makes Fusion special is we absolutely rely on the power of God. And we've seen that. 820, 830, and we've still got multiple people that are saying, hang tight, I've been traveling, I've been on business, and, and, and I'm still committing, it's still getting there. But, but right now, today, 820 plus thousand dollars that have been committed so that we can continue to build a lighthouse for the kingdom of God. 
so that people can be healed, that people can be restored on a significant level. And so nine weeks ago, we began this journey of this God is Able campaign. I mean, some of us are just sick of wearing these t-shirts, and I appreciate uh, Tom Wood on the Tonight Show writing a thank you card to that. But, but we began this journey, somebody saying, could, could, could God be able? Could God be able to do what He does? Because five years ago, my wife and I raised our salary to come here. The church couldn't afford to pay us, and now five years later, is God able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think? The, the, the budget of this church five years ago was less than $100,000. And we pledged to raise over two years, eight times that amount. I mean, that, that is a celebration right there. Come on again, let's celebrate that. And that commitment is above and beyond our tithe and our offering. So we're, we're still giving because guess what? We still got to take care of everything we got to take care of. And that's above and beyond. I mean, again, uh, the people are getting back and, and, and astounded at the miraculous of what God has done. And so as I was praying about today, the scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 comes to mind because God is able. In 2 Corinthians 9, it's Paul writing to the Corinthian church. And he says in verse 5 of chapter 9, he says, So I thought it necessary to urge the brothers to visit you in advance and finish the arrangements for the generous gift that you had promised, the gift that we've promised as a church. Then... It would be ready, second time he mentions generous, so then it will be ready as a generous gift, not as one grudgingly given. Have you ever given something grudgingly? Maybe it's an office staff member, Uh, maybe it's a work associate, everyone does gifts and you're like, I hate you, but I still got to give you a gift, you know? Uh, Maybe it's a brother or sister that you can't handle and you're like, I just got this, but I wish I could never get that, okay? Paul's saying, hey, it's not about giving it grudgingly, it's about giving it generously. He names it 12. Now, in in my version, the next title says, Generosity Encouraged. Tell your neighbor, Generosity Encouraged. That's what I want to do today. I want to encourage us. I literally today want to pray a prayer of blessing upon your life. A, a literal blessing that is going to come upon your life that you would see what God is going to do. And so verse 6, remember this, Paul says, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously, third time he brings this up, okay, you think that Paul t- n- nearly 2,000 years ago is trying to get something through our head, okay? So, so uh, uh, that whoever sows generously will also, what does it say? Reap. How many times is that? We counting? Four times, correct? Four times. He said two, two, two times prior, generously again, verse 7, each of you should give what you have. What's that word? Decided, okay, in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion. There was no elder that threatened any one of us. We did it privately. We did it online. We did it in envelopes. There was no, you, you know, figure that flashed on the screen of so-and-so gave that. The Wilsons gave that. The 24-year-old elder, elder Bob Gilmore in the church, 24 years old. He looks good for 24 years old. You know, no, 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 no. You, you, you did it. You did it in your heart, okay? And, and it says, because God loves a cheerful giver. Then verse 8, verse 8, you think I made this up. And God is, what does it say? And God is? Able to bless you abundantly. That's the Bible right there. Don't don't stone me. God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, come on, let's read together, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Did you get that maze landing? Every good work. You've got it. Tell your neighbor, you've got it. Your other neighbor didn't get it. You got it. You got to get some attitude on that. You got it. Verse 9, as it is, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. That's why we're reaching out. That's why we give 13% to missions. Uh, their the righteousness endures forever, verse 10. Now he who, and then he goes back to the seed thing, so important. Now he who supplies seed to the sower, so who gives you the seed? God. He gives you the seed. Never forget that. Maybe some of us are going to write that down. He is the giver of the seed. Let me say it again. He is the giver of the seed. So now he who supplies the seed and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of, what's that word? Seed. Who's the giver of the seed? God's the giver of the seed, okay? Some of us are going to get this by the end of today's message. And then what does it say? And will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. It doesn't say money. Correct? Because some people go, he, he, he's going to enlarge, and then other people are like, oh, I don't want to hear. No, no, no. What does it say? He's going to enlarge the 
righteousness. Now, if we have to go another tangent, you ain't got no righteousness. Because the Bible says your righteousness is like what? Filthy rags. Okay, Maze Landing, filthy rags. It is ugly. We're not even going to get in the original context of what filthy rags is. So, so Paul is saying, get it. That you don't have the seed, but the sower's going to give you some seed to sow. He's the great sower. And in the midst of that, you're going to reap a harvest that is simply righteousness, right standing in front of God. And in right standing in front of God, listen, you can do anything that is the desire of your heart because there is a blessing, a right standing of God on your life. Okay? Verse 11, you will be enriched in every way. So that, what, what does it say? So that you can be generous, five. On every occasion and through us, your six generosity will result in 11 scriptures and six times Paul mentions generous. Like if I'm not generous, I'm going, hey, I think I need to be self-correcting right here. But look what God has done through Fusion Church. There is a significant, radical level of generosity in this church. Verse 12, this service that you perform, okay, the service of giving, generosity, because they're preparing a special offering, is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks be to God. What do we do today? We had had a praise break, okay? We we praised God. I mean, we got out of those comfy movie theater seats, and I was in Maze Landing last week, and let me tell you, those seats, they're next level. I mean, Pastor Tom, he did a, didn't Pastor Tom do a fantastic job last week? Come on, let's appreciate him. And I'm just sitting there listening to Pastor Tom. I'm like, man, these seats are absolutely incredible. But, but, but we're giving today expressions of thanks. Verse 13, because of the service by which you have proved, everybody say proved, proved yourselves, others will praise God for the obedience that occupies your confession. So there's obedience because of the confession. We're a church that puts our money where our mouth is. We're going to get out and we're going to make something happen in the community. Let's jump down. He talks about generosity again. That's the seventh time. Verse 14, and then he says, and in your prayers for your hearts that will go out to you because of the surpassing, this is key, because of the surpassing, because of the overflowing grace God has given you. Verse 15, let's read together. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Indescribable gift. Thanks be to God. God, I give you thanks right now for the indescribable gift that you've given us through Jesus Christ. But Paul says, hang on, guys. Hang on. Can I, can, can I bless you? Can I encourage you? Paul is talking to the Corinthian church a, a little less than 2,000 years ago. And he's saying, hey, Corinthian church, there's a, there's a group in Judea that, that, that are Christians that need some of your help. Can you prepare a generous gift? Now, in, in another letter, he's challenging the Macedonians, and he's saying, hey, Macedonians, can you prepare a generous gift? And, and right here, just in, in, in 11 verses, over seven times, he uses the word generous. Would we come to a conclusion today that our lifestyles is Christ followers need to be generous. And I, I want to encourage you today. Number one, here it is. Your giving has encouraged others. Okay? I, I, I want you to walk away today, and, and I want you to just to go to the next level. Just I want you to walk a little higher. Why, why do we choose orange as the color? Because uh, when you see orange, literally in your mind, you walk a little higher. You get a pep in your step, if you want to call that. And so our giving, our generosity today has encouraged other people. On November 20th, uh, two weeks ago, uh, on, we, we went to the town council, and the town board voted on us and all the variances that we needed to acquire legally so that we could move into Diamond for get a closing date and move in. And as I stood there and as I testified under oath to the town, afterwards as we remained behind to talk and they finished their closed door meeting and they, they came back, literally town council members came up to us and were encouraged by the radical generosity of Fusion Church. People that were not Christ followers were encouraged by what God is doing, by what you are doing, because we're being generous in what God is doing. And I want to encourage you today 
that God is using you for a miracle. Come on, tell your neighbor, God is using you for a miracle. Come on, tell the other neighbor, God is using you for a miracle. So, so it's not just the town. It's not just the mayors and the city managers and, and people that are sick, but, but it's the unbelievers that are being encouraged. Think about it. If the vision of this church is to reach those that are far from Jesus, to equip Christ followers and to go to all the nations, then we're encouraging unbelievers because all the time people are coming up and, and they're saying, tell me more. Tell me more. I mean, I, I don't do the church thing, but, but I'm interested. I mean, just, just what's going on? So that unbelievers are being encouraged because of our generosity. And then here's the third thing. Believers are being encouraged because of your radical generosity. And so as a church, uh, we're a part of Next Level Coaching. And uh, through Matt Keller and Next Level Church in Florida, we get to uh, help coach th this coming year 115 churches. And out of the 115 churches, they're texting. And they're calling and they're saying, tell, tell us more. Tell us more of how we can be a part of this and what, what God is doing and how did you get through that tough time and how did you strategize and how, how did you get a sub, the, the greatest question we're being asked is, how did you get a substation, a police substation to be authorized in your church? You know what I say? The Bible says you have not because you ask not, correct? Like, I just asked. Like, we'll do it, it's going to cost the town nothing. But we want to love on the police and we want to love on the community. We want to build up the community together. You have not because you ask not. Hebrews 10, 24 says, and let us consider how we may, what's that word? Spur one another on towards love and good deeds. Come on. You, you got to spur each other. How many of us know spurring is not always fun? How, how do you know? I, I don't know, but I've never been a horse. And a horse is spurred all the time. But one thing I realize about a horse when you spur that horse, he gets a move on. Come on. Some of us need to hear this. God is spurring you right now. And it's not fun. It's not fun. But he's spurring you on to love, what does the scripture say, and good deeds. It's action. You can say, I want the internal, but God is saying there needs to be a time of spurring to action and good deeds. You and I are going to do that through this year, and we continue to do it. 2 Timothy 1.6 says, For this reason I, what's that word? Remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of hands. And that's what we teach in Growth Track. So if you've not gone through Growth Track, come on, sign up for Growth Track. Figure out that gift. But, but what we saw over the last nine weeks is that a church stood up with a gift of generosity. And so now, yes, we've got to complete the pledge of generosity, and we've got to continue to do our tithe and our treasures and our talents and all those different types of things. But, but there's got to be some fanning into flame. There's got to be some spurring that's got on. As Christians, we don't always like that. We like to be comfortable. We like to kind of like I was last week in Maze Landing. I was like, I could get used to this. I should move up there like full time, you know? I mean, they, they, those chairs are coming. Why, why? Because we love comfort. Jesus was never into comfort. We've got to understand that. The bottom line is Paul is speaking in the scripture that there's a grace of giving. Now, I'd love to uh, read a commentary specifically by the, uh, a guy by the name of Warren Wiersbe. I mean, just prolific uh, author on the Bible. And Warren Wiersbe wrote this. He says uh, in this New Testament commentary of his, he says, apparently, Paul did not see anything wrong or unspiritual about asking people to promise to give, to be generous. He did not tell them how much they had to promise, but he did expect them to keep their promise. When a person signs up for it, this is Wiersbe talking, not Wilson over here. When a person signs up for a telephone, he promises to pay a certain amount. When you, when you sign up to get that iPhone 10, you promise to pay a certain amount, okay? He, um, if it is acceptable to make, and this is where be talking, if it's acceptable to make financial commitments for things like telephones, cars, uh, credit cards, uh, unless you've gone through Financial Peace University, certainly it ought to be acceptable to make commitments to the Lord. That's what Wiersbe is saying. That, that we should be understanding of the commitments that we're making because the, the priority 
is to see people in heaven. And I'm going to share some stories in a few minutes about that. So, so number one, our, our generosity is going to uh, uh, encourage others. But I think number two is our generosity or our giving will bless you as an individual. It's going to bless you. Now, kind of time out before some of us like freak out about the prosperity gospel or the, you know, listen, I, I'm not into the prosperity gospel at all. But what I am into is a blessed life. That when we are a blessing, God allows us to steward the increase more. But it's simply an aspect of stewardship. We'll talk about that in the next few moments. And, and, and I think, honestly, over the last five years, God has said, Brendan, can you steward certain things? Number one is missions. I remember the first missions check we wrote in this church. It was $400. Our, our, our weekend income tithe was 4000 And on December 30th of 2012, I wasn't being paid yet, sat down with our treasurer and I said, Bob, I said, can you you write a check for $400? He looked at me and he said, we're not going to have enough money. I said, just trust me. He, He said, okay. So we wrote a check to a family that was moving from the States to India, who we still support today, who does our website. A whole other story over there. So we wrote this check for $400. I said, Bob, let's trust God. If we're, if we're the steward of the seed and he's the giver of the seed, we just got to trust him, correct? So as we did that, Bob went back. He lives in Ocean City. And he got on his computer and an email had come through that a gentleman in California that has never attended this church gave online. This is five years ago to New Covenant Community Church. The website was even more difficult to figure out. So how on earth did he find out who this church was in Summers Point with a website that was very difficult to figure out? And, and guess how much he gave? $400. Yes, your math's pretty good. $400. God knew. God was simply saying, hey, can I trust you in this? Can I trust you? Are, are, are you willing to be a steward of the seed? Verse 6 of 2 Corinthians 9 says, remember this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Let's jump down to verse 8. Verse 8 says, And the God who is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. You will abound in every good work. See, see, that's the plan of God. To bless you is to be abounding in every good work. If we're not abounding in every good work, then he is having a challenging time to be able to allow you to steward more in that every good work. That's what Paul is challenging in the Corinthian church. Nothing has changed over the last 2,000 years. And and so Paul right there in that scripture kind of, if you're taking notes, just kind of draw a line over there. If you're on the app, just, you know, begin, keep on writing. But Paul challenges us with two things. I want to just hit them real quickly. Because I think we can learn something from this. Paul challenges the Corinthian church with the uh, principle of increase. Now, here's the thought process. It's December. Uh, Some of us, you know, there's reviews in your organizations. There's pay increases in your organizations. The majority of us are looking to have at least a 4%, you know, inflation increase. But why do we have a different perspective within the church? If, if that's how we treat the world, you don't think God wants to do something greater with his people to have a greater effect on the share of story that's mind-blowing in, in a bit. So the principle of increase, write that down. We reap in measure as we sow. We reap in measure as we sow. The question I want to ask you today is, whose seed are you sowing? Take a moment. Whose seed? May's Landing. Whose seed are you sowing in maize landing? Because Summer's Point, think about this, sowed seed so that maize landing could open. Correct? But Summer's Point right now is sitting on some seeds that 98% of us in the room today did not sow seed for you to sit on the seat. Someone else did. And we've sowed seed for the next two Years so that people that have a life-changing relationship with Jesus on Black Horse Pike would recognize that someone else sowed seed. Make sense over there? Now, we don't stop there because maybe the next is Hamilton that we're going to sow seed into, correct? Okay? If you're in Hamilton, you, go, you better be making some noise about that one. 
uh, if you're in Vineland, if you're in Tom's River, if you're in Cherry Kill, I, I, because I don't serve a God that has a small mind. I serve a God that has a large mind. The question is, is not God able? The question is, are we able? Are we able to comprehend what God is wanting to do? See, I'm not sowing my seed. I'm simply stewarding the seed that God has given me. So when he says, so I sow. But when he says, be cautious to the soil, I, I'm cautious to the soil. The reality is, this is good soil. Tell your neighbor, this is good soil. Come on, Maze Landing, this is good soil. Why? Because we're seeing changed lives. We're seeing lives equipped. We're seeing people coming back from mission trips. Here's principle number two that Paul's challenging them on. Principle number two is the principle of intent. Intent. Motive. We reap as we sow with the right motives. Because God knows your motives, correct? It says in the Word of God that He understands our motives. So if we're sowing from the wrong heart, there's no blessing on that. That's why Paul says, don't give begrudgingly. Give with a happy attitude. In, in fact, the original context of that scripture is hilarious giving. I've been to a church, and my wife Danielle, we were at a church one time in Michigan, that when they get ready to take the offering, they stand up and they start hooting and hollering and whistling and praising Jesus. I mean, it is hilarious giving because that's what the Bible says. No, you know, we, you, I saw people getting nervous, like, is that, no, that's not going to happen, okay? We're a safe place, tell your neighbor, it's a safe place. But the principle of intent. So, so here it is, illustration, and then we'll kind of bring this to a close. Uh, hopefully, first week of um, January, we can close on the property, get in, start doing renovations. Uh, I'm, I'm believing maybe Easter, we're in some for some kind of pr preliminary services or something, you know, uh, just all the, you, you just, God, what are you doing? And here, the illustration of whose seed are you sowing? So, so as a church and as myself, and I'm being very transparent, I could be going, okay, well, we need to save for bathrooms. We need to save for carpet. We need to save for asphalt. We need to save for sidewalks. And I could be hoarding the seed. But I believe that's not what God teaches, correct? God teaches, if I'm giving you the seed, sow the seed. So a few weeks ago, Ann Dice, our, our outreach missions director, came and said, hey, I have an idea for Puerto Rico. Because everyone had ideas, but there was not a good idea. And we didn't want to send money, and we didn't know where the money was going, and there was no accountability, and shipping containers were being held in the ports, and everyone's freaking out, but there's like all these shipping containers, and everything's rotting, and I learned that personally from being involved in Haiti. And so she said, Pastor, there's this guy here that he has these life straws, life straws. I have no idea how to open this. There we go, just African star right there. <laughs> God bless my dentist right over here. So these life straws. So, so we could be hoarding seed as a, as a family and a, as an individual. You could be thinking of everything you're supposed to be doing, hoarding, but there's a principle of intent. And so Anne said, we can buy these straws and we can send them. And what this life straw is, it's called sowing seeds of life. Because someone can go to a stream with some dirty water. In fact, there's like a little thing you can actually hang it around your neck. And you can put it in dirty water. can begin to suck it up. What is, come on, some of us got to get this. What was once dirty water becomes living water. What was dirty water becomes living water. And is that not what God is wanting to do with each of us? That which is unrighteous. Come on, I'm giving you a seed. I'm just asking you to sow it. Right now, in Puerto Rico, this very moment, there are people in communities that are walking around with these life straws because of you, because of our 
radical generosity. So instead of hoarding, I'm going, God, can we give a little bit more? Can we give a little bit more? Can we build a house in the Dominican? Can we give life straws? And can, can we love on kids? And so we were throwing this giant birthday party for the Boys and Girls Club of Atlantic City. And they told us there's 150 kids and they get more than enough gifts, but could you throw a giant like food party, like nutritious food? Like not Burger King and McDonald's. You just do the math, 150 kids at $10 a piece, that's $1,500 right there. Oh, we need a toilet. We need asphalt. We need a, a desk for a child to sit in. Or we could sow some seed. We could take some dirty water and give some living water. Here's number three as we close. Your giving has met needs and glorified God. Our generosity as a church and the continued generosity has met the need. Someone is living today because you gave and you chose not to hoard. You chose to give. But more important, it's glorified God. It closes this last story. A few weeks ago, we were told that there was a mom. She was 28 years old. She had four kids and she was murdered with a hammer in EHT. Her name was Sarah. We got an email that the grandmother was taking care of the kids and we had someone in the school that knew the kids and there was a need and so we got them gift cards because we realized quickly gift cards are the way to go around here. We put action to the generosity of this church. But as I heard about Sarah, 28, four children, that was murdered by a hammer by her boyfriend. Began a conversation with a police officer in another city. And he said that if we had a substation and we had trained people, they could possibly either meet the police officer with four car seats. Because how many times have you seen a police officer driving around with car seats in their truck? Not many times. And maybe we could take those children back to the facility at Egg Harbor Township and the person that has been in the altercation that, that's giving the testimony that's been beaten can be with the police officer in the substation that is clean and comfortable and a place of peace because we're preaching on that for the next few weeks. And the volunteer could take the children and take them back to the children's ministry. And where they've seen the despicable and the dirty, we could sit down with them in a room and just love on them. And take that which is dirty. And bring the peace of God. See, I, come on. I don't think we get what God's wanting to do. Can I be honest? Guys, I think some of us are not getting that God's up to something crazy. And imagine. See, see, I know you go to bed at night. The voices you hear are maybe your business or your thing that you're trying to do, and I'm not faulting you you're going to help fund what God's doing. But I've got to bed. With the voices of that lady that died. Saying maybe, maybe we could stop the next one. Maybe we could be a part of the solution instead of preaching against everything. Let's be a church that stands up. A church that solves the problem. In this discussion with this police officer and his wife, she said, Pastor, I'm there. I'm there at three o'clock in the morning. I'm there with those car seats. I'm there taking into the the child into that room and loving on them and feeding them and clothing them. 
whatever it might be. But when that happens, God is glorified. Because no one ain't glorified at 3 a.m. in the morning. But God is glorified. And that's what Paul is saying. He's saying, listen, are you willing to take a, a, a life straw? You, you're the life straw. Are you willing to take that which is unrighteous and simply give some living water? And stand to our feet, Maze Landing, Summers Point. I recall, I recall hearing this story and I close with this. I was reading one day and it was so good I wrote it down. But this author said, I recall hearing a story about a wealthy Christian who daily at the family devotions, and you might say, I'm not wealthy, and I'd say, yes, I grew up in Africa. Everyone in the United States is wealthy. And at family devotions, this wealthy Christian man prayed for the needs of the missionaries that his church supported. And one morning after he had concluded his family prayers, the little boy said to him, Dad, if I had your checkbook, I could answer all your prayers. If I had your checkbook, Dad, I could answer all your prayers. You know what I'm encouraged about? Is that fusion is different. Fusion's willing to be a part of the solution in this community. Fusion's willing to rescue those that are going to hell. Fusion is willing to know right now at our Summers Point campus, there's a limitless room that deals and ministers to children on the sensory spectrum. And it's gonna only be bigger and better at EHT. And God gets the glory for that. The teacher doesn't get the glory, but God gets the glory. God, we love you right now. Would you pour your blessing? Come on, every location. Everyone's hands open. Lord, would you pour your blessing upon every person right now? Pour your blessing, God. Pour your glory. Give us vision. Forgive us for small-mindedness, God. Forgive us for a lack of understanding. Speak clearly to your church. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Thanks for checking out this message from Fusion Church. If you made a decision today to follow Jesus, we want to hear all about it and see whatever we can do to help you take a next step. You can get in touch with us by going to info at fusionchurch.cc and someone will get back to you with how we can help you with that. Have a great Christmas. God bless.